A device profile exists for the E300 electronic overload relay in Rockla Automation's Studio 5000 Logix Designer software. The device profile allows users to configure the E300 as well as establish communications between the Logix controller and the E300 electronic overload relay. To use the device profile, the user must add the device to the Ethernet tree that's being scanned by the Logix controller. To do this, simply right-click on the Ethernet network and click on New Module. Next, search for the E300 electronic overload relay. Only one device profile exists for the E300 electronic overload relay, and it's representing its Ethernet IP communications card. Select the Ethernet IP communications card and press Create. This will bring up a dialog box. Next, we name our E300 electronic overload relay. We provide it its Ethernet IP address. And now we can begin to configure the E300 electronic overload relay itself. First, we'll change the module definition. We will make sure that the revision is correct for its electronic keying. Next, we'll select the sensing module type. In this example, we have a voltage current ground fault 30 amp sensing module. Next, we'll select the control module type. In this example, we'll be using the 120 volt AC control module. Next, we'll define if we have any expansion modules. If we did have a digital expansion module, we would right click on digital module and add a module. We would select the address of the digital module and the module type. In this example, we will select a 120 volt AC digital control module. Next, we'll add if we have an operator station. In this example, we'll be adding an E300 control station. Next, we will define how we want the motor control algorithm to operate. Today we have a couple control strategies to choose from. We can either choose a traditional overload with a normally closed relay, or we can choose a monitor mode or custom mode. For this example, we'll use custom mode, and we will use relay zero as a combination control and trip relay. This allows the end user to wire up relay zero directly in series with the contact coil. The user can then use a network command to control the coil, and that same relay will also open when there's a trip event. Other selections that are available are a trip relay, a trip alarm, and a warning alarm. In this example, we will configure relay 1 to be a trip alarm. The trip alarm is a normally open contact. In the event of a trip condition, this relay will close, and this can be used to illuminate a pilot light to indicate that there was a trip. Next, we'll configure the data links using the input data. The E300 has eight available data links. The user can select 
additional parameters that he would like part of his input I.O. scan. There are a number of additional parameters that the user can choose from. In this example, we'll configure data link 0 to be the overload time to trip. Now that we've finished configuring the module definition, we will apply these changes. And now we'll continue to configure our protection configuration parameters. To do this, press the protection folder. In the protection overload display, we will select the motor type. In our example, we will use a three-phase motor. And the user can select the trip class for his overload relay. In this example, we'll have a trip class of 10. And finally, we'll select our full load current rating for the electric motor. In this example, we have a 1 amp full load amp setting for our electric motor. Pressing OK applies these changes to the configuration assembly in the Logics controller. This is a key part for the automatic device configuration to work properly between the Logix controller and the E300 electronic overload relay. Now that we've finished configuring our E300, we can close the select module type interface. Now that the device profile has been configured, let's download the Logix control file to the Logix controller. To do this, we must first set a communication path between the PC and the Logix controller. For this example, we'll be communicating to a Compact Logix L36 ERM located at IP address 192.168.1.2. Now that the communications path has been established, we will save the project. Next, we will download the project to the Logix controller. By pressing the download button, we will accept these changes and override the project file that already exists in the Logix controller. To begin communications between our Logix controller and our E300 electronic overload relay, we will put the controller back into run mode. As you can see, the IO OK data indicator is solid green, which means that the Logix controller is successfully communicating to our E300 electronic overload relay. Another way to view this is by going into the device profile and select module information and we can verify that our E300 electronic overload relay is communicating with our Logix controller. The status indicator shows that our device is running. Using a device profile makes communications easy with the E300 electronic overload relay and any Rockwell Automation Logix controller. With a simple few mouse clicks, a user can add a device to the Logix controller. It can also configure the device, and it also includes automatic device configuration, in which if a device were to be replaced, the Logix controller would automatically download the configuration data to the new device.